Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of Live with Brian. And like I said before, I got a special guest with us on today. My wonderful father that, that got me in this world. <laughs> and I just want to let y'all know before we yes, get things sir. started that today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're still going to do our normal thing, but it's going to be a little bit different than what we normal do, normally do. Where y'all just roll with it, do what we normally do. But welcome to the show. Glad to finally have you yes, um, up in your father. I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here. <laughs> let me tell you something. It's... I'm just happy to be here. I'm gonna just put it to you like that. Be able to be online and be able to talk and to be able to share and just do do this with you. I mean, it's just a big thing. It's a big thing. So, so, so tell us a so little bit good. before we dive into it. Tell us and make sure you're, you're talking into the mic too. Uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself. What's your your background, your upbringing, all that type of stuff? Oh man, my background, background, background. Okay, well, background is I'm shoot, born and raised in Louisiana, uh, New Iberia, Louisiana. Um, um, I uh, went to uh, New Iberia Senior High School. Uh, all the personal information. Yeah, yeah, graduated <laughs> from over there. I mean, you know, I'm a, uh, a, a, a husband. I'm a, also a father. Um, I'm also, um, it's a lot of things I do. I, I, I wear a lot of different hats when mm -hmm. it comes down to that. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm just uh, a person that just want to inspire people and just want to get things out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So growing growing up and in the things that you grew up in, in the area that you grew up in, what do you feel like is some of the biggest things that, that got you to where you are today? Because we're living in two different types. Well, I'm growing up in one type of society right now, yeah. and you've grown up in a totally different society. So what's some of the things that, that you had to adjust to thus far and what also got you to where you at in your life? Man, I think just having a... It's my daddy, y'all. Just for, just, for, um, just having a, a, a father in my life, um, having um, my mom in my life, um, some God fearing people, people that raised us in the way, um, uh, uh, the right way. And there was a lot of distractions out there, um, but they had a lot of um, impact on my life. A lot of impact on my life uh, when it came down for discipline, when it came down to just having a sense of direction on, um, on where to go, what to do, uh, being confident in myself, and just having a role model, just having someone to, to look up to. To know, mm -hmm. to give me that sense of direction, to let me know, okay, this is this is the format. This mm -hmm. is what this is how you do it. Um, you can follow it, or you don't have to follow it. But um, just having um, my father, definitely my mother, in my life is uh, was definitely a, a molding point and shaping point in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for all the people that I'm seeing, like, we got a whole bunch of new people. Shout out to all the 89 people that's up in here right now. Um, what's up? What's going on, Raven? I see you in the building. Um, for all of y'all that don't know, this is my dad. This is the person dad? that has literally reared me from out the womb up until this point. And today's episode is going to be more so catered towards um, pretty much like I want to make sure we display a good balance of a good, healthy relationship between a father and a son. You know, often days we living in a time to where like single mother households is a thing. You know, like it's a common thing. It's way more common than what it once was before. So I want to use my platform to show people what uh, what I feel as though is a healthy relationship between a black man and his son. But leading right, on to right. that, can you tell them a little bit more? Because uh, we're going to dive into some more stuff a little bit later. You started dating mama. Hmm. <laughs> you started dating mama with El Salvador yeah. your high school? Yeah. You can, so, basically, you can say in 92. 92. 92 is where it basically all started. Yeah, that's when we started uh, dating, started seeing each other. Um, it was kind of weird because um, she she went with me off of a, a, a bet, her and a friend. <laughs> they wanted to see who could uh, get me first or whatever. And uh, just so happened she, I guess you can say she landed the deal, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, it been it has been a, a journey. It has been good, but yeah, yeah. You ain't got to tell them all yet, because I yeah. know you and Mama are gonna have your own episode. Yeah. You don't have to spill yeah, everything yeah. yet. Yeah, but ninety two, ninety two is the time we met in high school. Yeah, that was the time. Mm -hmm. And y'all, yeah. I'm the oldest of three, so you had y'all had me April 19, 1995. So that was y'all senior year of high school, right? Yeah, yeah so tell man. me how yeah. how did that affect <laughs> the relationship? You don't have to go too far into detail, but to to have a general consensus, like and let them know a little bit of the story. How was that transition? Like, cause I, and he's not going to say nothing I already don't know. That's one thing about my, y'all know I brag about my parents. They're very <laughs> transparent with me, you know? So he's about to tell y'all some new stuff, but what was it like going from, I mean, you're young, you was like what, 18, 19 yeah, at the time? Man. Yeah. And then mama yeah. like, oh, I'm pregnant. Yeah. That's a big move, man. I tell you, look, it was, the experience of that was very, like you would say, like a fish out of water, mm. you know, uncomfortable in a sense. 
But um, I mean, because you got to realize, you got to realize the age, you got to realize the time. Um, we were still in high school, uh, getting ready to graduate uh, from high school. Um, we had plans on certain things that we that we was gonna do, um, you know. But you know how they say when you make plans, sometimes sometimes those plans get kind of uh, off track sometimes. But everything worked out for the good. Everything worked out for the good. You know, it's always a plus, um, as you can tell. I mean, you see the results of it now. You hear and the success and everything that you have going on, and um, it's it been good. But at that age, yeah, man, that was kind of one of those times. I was I was nervous because at the end of the day, okay, now you got to realize now we have to we have to explain this yeah. to our parents for one. <laughs> You know, that's one thing. How are we going to get across that? And you got to understand my parents, my parents um, was definitely strict. Yeah. You know, so how do you Especially get it? And not just that. I mean, not just my parents. I mean, her parents, mm-hmm. her dad, you know, he was like a drill sergeant. So it's like, OK, what do I how do I explain this to, mm-hmm. to him? How do I? So I'm nervous. I'm going to just tell you, I'm going to come out and just say I'm, I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect, you know, um, <clears throat> but for the most part. I mean, it went well. I mean, I got a chance to, to, to well, I'm not going to get into all that, but because uh, there's a lot of things you, I can get into uh-huh. of how everything went down as yeah. for how her dad found out. And, yeah. and, and I, look, if you want to wait till you and mama have your episode, that's fine. Yeah. Well, you know, just stay with, say what you want to say. But yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to just say this. I'm going <laughs> to just say this. Her dad didn't know that she was pregnant, right? Mm-hmm. He found, well, we didn't tell him. She, he found out through some outsiders. So I'm, I'm. Let me set this up, okay? So I'm at at her house, and she. I'm waiting for her to come from the back, I think. And I'm sitting in the front, and me and him was just talking about whatever. And um, I was comfortable, and he just came out the blue. He was like, "Well, when you was gonna tell me?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm bro. like, I'm like, what you mean? When I was gonna tell you? What like what 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 you mean? You still I'm, to I'm play still cool? I'm still playing stupid." <laughs> I'm still playing it like as if, look, man, I'm not about to say this. Right. If he gonna have to come out and say that he knows what you know. He have to say what he what he yeah, what he mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not about to shoot myself in the foot. So I didn't say nothing. So I'm like, then finally he was like, okay, well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, mm-hmm. you know the baby. Like, how are you gonna? Uh, like, what's your what's your intentions? Right. What's your intentions? So I'm like, y'all been dating for a while at that point. Y'all been dating for like what two years, a year and a half? Oh, uh, y'all started talking. Yeah, school, yeah, right? yeah. Because ninety two we started talking. You came in ninety five. So yeah. So basically, what uh, three years, two, mm-hmm. two, two and a half, three years, uh, time span in between. But anyway, he he was like, well, what what you gonna do? So I was like, well, look, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take care of my child. Right. And he was like, I'm glad they kept. Now the funny part about it, he was like, he was like, he was like, no, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm like, well, what you mean? I know you're gonna take care of your child, mm-hmm. but he was like, um, "What you gonna do? Are you, like, other words, you gonna get married mm-hmm. when y'all getting married?" So I'm right. like, "I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on, married? <laughs> I mean, it's not like I wasn't gonna marry her, but yeah. at that time, that I'm like, time, no, man, it's, it's it's 95. I mean, I'm still young, young. you know. I'm, 18, I wasn't, 19. yeah, I'm not even thinking on that level. I mean, that was kind of beyond my my thoughts at that time. Mm-hmm. But anyway, anyway." Uh, to make a long story short, um, that's how it went down. Yeah, ninety two. Uh, it was it was it was something to remember. I mean, 90, 90, yeah, yeah, ninety five, mm-hmm. ninety five, ninety five. And before we move on, y'all, uh, I do see y'all comments in the comment sections, and I, I will get to them. But like, I'm trying to make sure we pay to what we tell a, a nice full story, you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Let's see. Raven said hello. Hey, how you doing, uh, Raven? Vicky's over said the right way. Ooh, I just know he's stubborn. I, I don't feel like you stubborn. I feel like you. I feel like you. What that mean? We was talking about you was talking about raise. Uh, what you had said you was like raise raising. Um, you were raised the right way. Are they believed in raising? You talking yeah, about yeah. The one for Paul. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he has good morals. I'll I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then on, she man. said, "I thought he was your homeboys at first. He fine. Look, let me tell y'all something. My dad had been getting this since the beginning. Of right. Time. This is nothing new. We got some. This is nothing new. I hope my jeans carry over like his is doing. So far, so good. But you you. 40, 46. Yeah, but I say you 46, 46 and don't look it at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish my body said the same. <laughs> <laughs> and but, then Miss Nicole Love 34 said, uh, how do you define greatness? Because that was around the time you were talking about oh, like, me being born and all man, that. Man, greatness, stuff. man. How do I define greatness? Oh, man, I don't think it's one specific definition for greatness. You know, when you talk about greatness, greatness is, is uh, or being great, I think, is whenever you are consistent or persistent at 
whatever goal, whatever thing that you are trying to mm-hmm. accomplish in life, I think when you um, 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 stay consistent at it, and not just stay consistent, but what I want to say also is that um, even when you try to attempt to accomplish your goals and you get those letdowns, right, right. when you get those type of things, Man. so 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 how do you how do shake I back. get up from that? How do I shake back from that? You know, because there's some people that can't shake back from it mentally, physically, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, whenever I feel greatness is whenever you can continue to be consistent at what you're doing and and and, and handle uh, disappointment mm-hmm. very well. You know, uh, um, knowing that even though the goal may not happen at a certain time whenever you you want it to happen, mm-hmm. you know. But um, knowing that you, if you keep staying consistent at it, discipline. it's going to happen. The discipline, um, just keeping at it, and that's greatness, man. And when you can just accomplish, when you can just set goals, it have to be big goals, <clears throat> but it can be small goals. Mm-hmm. You know, step one, step two, step three. Because sometimes we want to just go straight to the straight top, to right. and it don't work like that. You it's know what I'm saying? Business, everybody wants yeah. quick. Everybody wants it now. Yeah, real, like prime example. Yeah. I, I started my business in 20, right? And that's when I got to college, like 2018, I want to say, somewhere around that. Yeah, and there's yeah. been plenty of days. Y'all didn't saw me when I was when I got the first apartment. Yeah. Like, I wasn't close to where I'm at now. No, you know, not even close. Been, been let down, losing clients, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean we out. had conversations about trying to get the business going, mm-hmm. trying to do certain things, losing clients, and but staying. That's one thing I can say about him. I can say this, is that on my behalf, I can, I can say this on my part, that he's very disciplined. Gotta and be. he's very consistent <laughs> as what he's doing because I sit back and I look at some of the things that he do and I'd be like, man, he's really not giving up on this. Mm-hmm. He's really trying. He's really trying to do this. I, I can remember whenever you was working at the at, at the, the airport, at the airport mm-hmm. and you're saying you was quitting your job. Oh, and I'm like, quitting your job? Okay, what's the plan B? And it's like, okay, I don't, well, yeah, I it's, it's not like he, that. you know, he didn't have a plan B. In the, well, he had a plan B, um, which was the band, yeah. which the band was working at out. The time. At yeah. the time, it was really rolling. So I said, well, as long as you got a plan, I mean, go for it. You know what I'm saying? And you kept doing that. And and uh, one thing led to another, and I could see the progress. You know, I'm like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Look like he got this. Look like he got this. You know, he can handle it. So, yeah, man, um, yeah, yeah. And I didn't get it from yeah. nowhere, y'all. Let me just put that out there. My dad has been a big staple in my life since I was born. Like all from I can't I don't think I could ever recall a time when you wasn't working. You always yeah. as long as I've been like you've always had a job. Yeah, yeah, man. I always that that's one thing I learned from my father is always being a provider. That's one thing I can always say that I learned from him is to be a provider of anything. Provide for your family. family. Mm-hmm. Be there for your family. Provide for your family. And um I think that's what it was, you know what I mean? Just just providing man, just being there. Just being the man that I was taught to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next question from the same person, Miss Nicole, she said, what qualities do you admire in other people? The quality, qualities that I, I admire in certain people is that when they can be authentic, mm-hmm. that's a, 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 a top thing for me to be authentic, that quality, because there are a lot of people that have a lot of identity crisis and they don't, yeah. re- they don't really know who they are. Mm-hmm. And that's a sad thing when you see somebody going left, right. Mm-hmm. They want to be here. They want to be there. Um, they up, like they're down. That, I think society. I think I think society because society put a lot of pressure on people to be a certain way, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that that definitely plays a part on it. And I think number two, whenever you haven't been taught, right, from a young age, right, who you are, or, 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 or who you are. And don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. it's going to be time when you have to try to find mm-hmm. the uh, a sense of direction of where you're going because you can be. You can be good at, at at multiple things, okay. But what I what I want to really lock down on that brings me to a question. You know? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you raised me. So, like, what was what was it like raising? Okay, so describe me as a child up until now, like the characteristics <laughs> and like what was that process like watching me grow into like who I am. Man, today? man. I mean, I don't know. I mean, just I mean, I can remember when you was first first born. I mean, just that, just just that was a good feeling for me. You know, first child, first son. You know, um, I mean, we would uh, dress you with the best clothes. Me and your mom would, uh, you had all of the, um, at the time, what it was guests, it was Nautica, it was the Deion Sanders shoes, it was the, uh, we just, you know, that's what it was, Jordans. I mean, we just was was, was having fun. And um, personality-wise, I mean, I know just watching you grow up, me and Small, I, I knew you were going to be a person that was um, going to be, I ain't going to say challenging, but... Just, nah, tell the truth just <laughs> different in a way. I mean, because you were real comical. You were real kind of comical in a sense. 
Because they, I can remember some days when I think we had some kind of event that we had going on. It might have been your birthday, I think might have mm-hmm. was. Might have been like like your third birthday or fourth birthday, something like that. And um, for some reason, you just kept bending down and looking through your legs and and just doing like little just little small crazy things that had, that was catching everybody's attention. And everybody was like, "Well, what is he doing? What is he doing?" Or, or, or you would run and, and you would kind of like tap somebody, hit somebody and take out running or just a little thing, you know, just being a kid. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, OK, yeah, he got a personality. I see what's going on with him. You know what I mean? And and, and, and just growing up, um, the progression of growing up, going from being that age to another age. I know in middle school, I know we had a few challenges we might have had in school. I I'm think I remember what exactly. Well, name, name I, mean, one. I mean, I can remember when we had a. Uh, what it was you was in school that was right before i transferred with I, I, I think it might have was no i thought well, i was saying middle school but it might have been elementary because it was at pencil i think that's elementary and yeah yeah elementary i think he was in some guy i think a little boy might have pushed you or it was something that went down i think you slapped them off something like that we had to come to school and yeah, yeah. with the get with the parents it was it was a mess but um yeah that was one of the events yeah something that went on yeah yeah, man. Now I did not know y'all had to have a parent conference. I didn't know that. But we had to go to school. I mean, anytime you, anytime you, uh, your child slap another kid. Well, I mean, in my, in yeah. my, in my defense, cause I remember what happened. In my defense, y'all know I wasn't starting no fight, but I'm a finish. Well, no, I know exactly, exactly. And I mean, that's the way you was taught. You know, what I mean, by the end of the day, I mean, yeah, we. I think I'm not mistaken. I think we had to go to school for that. I think we had to have a discussion and uh, yeah, and go and go, just settle everything, get everything straight mm-hmm. for the most part, man. But uh. Yeah, and not just that. I mean, just watching you grow up. I mean, when it came down to the situation, the transition that was taking place when you was running track, mm-hmm. how you went from uh, Iberia Middle to Anderson. to Anderson, and I think mm-hmm. that was the um, that was a big turning point I could see in your life. I found my talent. You know, well, yeah, my talent. exactly. Because I can remember, I can remember at Iberia Middle. I was middle. I was like, well, what event are you running? We're like, what what are you doing? And you was like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, well, how you don't know? Like, how you don't know if the coach not not training? He's In not background, telling. You he's know? an athlete, by the way, y'all. Exactly. He did track football, all of that. Don't right. Continue. Right. So I was exactly, and that's what I, that's why that's why I wanted to know because I was going to help. Oh, mom up in here. Personally train you. <laughs> Uh, what she said? She said go to school for. He talking about whenever uh back in Pearson, whenever I got in that altercation with Roy. But continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the transition, the transition when he was uh, that was a major transition when he went from Iberia Middle School to Anderson, Anderson uh, Middle School. Um, that was the point where you really found your identity as a um as as, as, as an athlete, mm-hmm. as an athlete because. Um, they, it had some uh, intense training. You was around some very competitive yes, people, man. which brought the best out of you. And um, yeah, man, it was it was. I, I went to the track meets. I mean, it was a lot of meets where you. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I'm gonna put it to you like this. I'm gonna just say like this. I mean, you can brag over. No, you can brag I'm just saying, me. I was working. I was working, and I and I ain't, I, I got to admit, I wouldn't. I wasn't going to uh, your track meets at the beginning because mm-hmm. I, I understood. I was just working. Age, so, I, so I said, I said, well, let me go. Let me go and let me go see what's going on. I kind of heard, you know, heard things about you or whatever. So when I got there, my cousin was sitting down next to me. I think it was Charles, Charles Fusilier. And he was like, uh, Charles was like, Charles was like, man, they got a little guy over here, man. He just be tearing people up, man. He just running them down in the ground. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see who he is. I said, mm-hmm. well, who he is? He's like, yeah, he got like a mohawk, you know. And I was like, okay, oh, well, I'm oh, like, that could be anybody. I'm like, that could be anybody. Cause at, at that time, uh, people was wearing, you know, the Mohawk. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, who is who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? And then finally, when you came out stretching to get ready to do your event, he said, oh, look, he's right there. So I was like, oh, I'm like, man, that's my son. He said, man. And he said, bro, your son been killing it. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Matter of fact, I think that, that, that year when Hanson was there, and I think they was kind of like trying, trying to, re- to trying to recruit people? you yeah. and trying to get you to go to Hanson to go run for them because they had some guy that was kind of tall. I think uh, he was. Uh, not J- what's that dude named? J- uh, <clears throat> he went to UL. I forgot, but I know I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was running for him. But yeah, man, uh, and just seeing that man and uh, just seeing the, the progression and being an athlete, uh, not just that transition into a musician because you were definitely in a band too. Mm-hmm. So um, got a chance to see you perform in that in that light. Um, I mean, it is a, uh, it's awesome, man. Whenever you can just sit back and just watch your kid and watch, see him develop, see him develop, and see him come into something. Because I mean, cause look, they got kids out there doing all they into all kind of different things. That's not even right. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, so to see that on a positive note, I um, mean, that's a blessing. That was a blessing for me. Uh, and all for the, I'm seeing a lot of new people up in here too. Uh, for all of you that don't know, I feel like I'm have to say this a lot because I forgot to put it in the title. This is my father. 
This is my How dad. How y'all doing? He has raised me quite well. And my mom is in here too, y'all. So watch what y'all say. Don't be coming yeah, to my dad yeah, like yeah. that. Because she's going she gonna to talk to you. Liturgical gonna say one. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh, JT. She say JT. Hmm? She got JT. That was his name. I'm not seeing it. What's she, what's she Look, you can see on the screen. It was like, oh, not, it's up there, but it's not on here. Yeah, yet. JT. That was, that, that was the guy like, name. That was the guy name. He went to, yeah, he went to you. He was really, really good. Yeah, he was. Um, somebody has said that's a beautiful answer. Exactly, you have to handle disappointment. Going back to what we were talking about. Oh yeah, with, um, yeah. Because not everybody can get back from that, man. Not everybody can bounce back from disappointment, man. Mm-hmm. What's going on, Bad Nine Ben? I said, hey, fam. What's going on? We see you up in here, Nicole. Uh, Nicole. By the way, Nicole, you're dropping some great, some great questions. By the way, but um, Nicole Love Thirty Four said, "How have your needs changed since your twenties, thirties, forties, etc." Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a very general question because she didn't really specify. But so I guess yeah. answer that to like whatever. How yeah, you feel how my that? knees change? Oh well, I don't know, man. Um, shoot, when it comes down to my knees from when I was twenty, I guess when you're twenty, and at at that age, needs wise, I mean, mm-hmm. I can mean anything. It's a broad question. Needs wise, I mean, really and truly, you just go about life, just living life. You don't really. I'm not gonna say you. Well, you can be no. I'm gonna put it to you like this: at a at a young age, you can be very needy. Mm-hmm. You can be very needy because you know not established. Yeah, yet. you're not really established yet. You know, but when you get older, there's less things that bother you. It's less things you really need. Mm-hmm. As long as you got a um, somebody to love you, mm-hmm. you have somebody that shout can. Out that, to my mama. Yes, shout out to my wife. <laughs> you know, somebody that can that can love on you. You know, what I'm saying somebody that can uh, definitely can cook. Um, those type of attributes, somebody that's going to really care for you, mm-hmm. you know, have your best interest at heart. Um, you know, I'm good. I mean, I, I'm not really a needy person when it comes down to me being at this age right here. I mean, mm-hmm. in my, in my forties, um, but, but at 20, somebody, uh, yeah, yeah. I think for anybody, uh, any twenties, they can become very needy mm-hmm. because like you said, they're trying to find themselves. Right. Um, so when you're trying to find yourself, it's like you're all over the place. Which brings me to, yeah. so I know you said earlier, you talked about like midlife crisis and stuff like that. Do you feel as though, cause I, I feel like you're past that point of like, well, most people would have a midlife crisis. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you've had one? Cause I know I, me personally, I didn't see it. Once I moved out, I moved out. So I wasn't yeah. in the house every day to watch. Yeah. When I, when I had hit like around my twenties, I had moved out. And you was in like y'all had just hit forty. I want to say too, yeah. like y'all late thirties yeah. or So I didn't, yeah. I didn't get the chance to see that in the house like Kimmy did. So do you feel as though you even went through something like that? I mean, towards I can when you say midlife crisis, I can, I mean, I can gear that maybe towards age wise. And what I mean by that is, like when you reach a certain age, mm-hmm. you get to wondering sometimes. You get to that, you, you get to to figure okay, like okay, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you, you kind of get into that panic mood. Kind of like, okay, I'm 40 now. Okay, so now, you know, when you're younger, you're just all over the place. You, you figure you got time. But whenever you get older, it's like, okay, now it's something about that 40 mark. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, you got the 40, then you have the big 50. Mm-hmm. You know, when you reach 40, it's like, that's like the, to me, that's like the, it, not to say identity crisis, but it's like you're kind of like, okay. You should be established. Yeah, 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 I should be established. So it's like, okay, you kind of get worried. Okay, do I have everything in order? Do I have mm-hmm. all my ducks in a row? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when it comes down to finances, uh, when it comes down to, I mean, just your marriage, anything. You know what I mean? You just want to make sure that you got everything on point um, when you get. So I can see, if I can, if I can gear it toward that direction, mm-hmm. I can say midlife cri- crisis. I can say at the age of 40, I, I started to have these. You're more aware. Mm-hmm. You're more aware of, okay, oh, hold on. I got to slow this thing down, mm-hmm. you know. What's really going on? Right. What do I really want? What do I really want to do? You know, um, for the next half of my life. I, and I was just about to say it's kind of like that halfway mark because life yeah. expectancy in America is not even it's not even averaging hundred plus no more. Right, correct. You know, so and I wouldn't say because me personally, from the outside looking in, me and from what I've experienced growing up in the house with y'all, I would say you do have it together. But yeah. uh, but how I'm perceiving it, knowing you personally, is more so like thinking more longevity. Like, what can I leave for my kids? Exactly. You know, yeah. and, like, and, and that's the scare. You know, what I'm saying that's the kind of like the the part that have you kind of like okay, whoa, like okay. I got to leave a legacy. I have to try my best to get something done to where I can leave uh, you all with something. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes down to um, just leaving a legacy, just making a name or, mm-hmm. you know, that's one of the biggest things. You know, just, okay, what did I leave behind? Yeah. You know, I know I, I know I had good advice. I know I've, I've, mm-hmm. I raised y'all correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I love y'all the right way. But at the end of the day, okay, what have I left? You know now, what I'm saying? I will say this. Because you already, you already know how I feel about where I'm going to be in X amount of and what I want to do for the family as well. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I feel as though 
the principles and the things that you've instilled inside of us. You were you and Mama right. have instilled inside of us thus far. I'm not gonna say because I don't want I don't want to even put it on the same caliber with monitor like with money. Okay. But I will say to me that outweighs whatever amount of money you can leave behind. Yeah. Because to me, I look at or at least my principle or my definition of a good father is somebody that has because prime example you can leave. A child millions of dollars. Right, but correct. If you didn't correct. Raise them exactly. The right, you know what exactly. What are they gonna do with that? Exactly. What are they gonna do? I mean, they can be immature, they can have no knowledge of what to do, no type of guidance, you know what I'm saying? Of knowing what to do with the money, and then they waste all the money, and then what's good at all the hard earned money you done left. And it's gone. And it's all gone. Mm-hmm. Because they just didn't they, they wasn't taught any kind of mm-hmm. like you say, principles. Right. Principles. And I feel like that's why I run my business so well, even even outside of the Coach Brian stuff, all my other stuff I have going on, because it's like I watched for the longest, I got a front row seat to watch you and mama go through. Like, cause I watched it from y'all going from like being young. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's memories I have of y'all when we, I was still living in like apartments and right, stuff like right, that right, up right. until now. Right. And I kind of vicariously learned things without mm-hmm. me having to go through it in a sense. Right. But to kind of model my business behavior yeah, like that and yeah. how I go through like, and to me, that outweighs if you would leave us millions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. it's like, once again, right. what am I going to do? You had, you, you had that image. It? You had a blueprint. You had right. something you can look forward to or look at. Cause it's nothing like having a picture in front of you. Exactly. You know, somebody could say, somebody could say, okay, do X, Y, Z, do this, do that. But it's nothing like, okay, somebody walks, somebody you. walking you through mm-hmm. it, uh, painting a picture for you, to where you can actually see exactly what to do, how to move, you know, how, how to make the right decisions when it comes down to just life in general. You know, what I mean, that's one of the things. Um, just having that example, yeah. And I know I try my best, and your mom, your mom also too. You know, together as one, um, to be that role model, to be that one that's in the home, to be that that rock or to be like that um mm-hmm. you know just to be stable because there's a lot of homes that's unstable yeah but i felt like it was a good balance because yeah. not to say that y'all was falling short in any area per right. se, but it was like in regards to taking care of us mm-hmm. it's like the for one the discipline was not short <laughs> right, <laughs> that right, wasn't right 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 yeah. <laughs> like, but as far as like instill like prime example when i first was uh going to college mm-hmm. and we the whole talk about what i should major in and stuff like that and we was totally on two different sides of the spectrum right but at the end of the day you was like well regardless of what you do mm-hmm. make sure that you have a plan for it. You know, you plan for X, Y, right, and Z, right. and you bill it this way, and Correct. make sure it, it provides longevity at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Like, mm-hmm. no matter what we did, from yeah. track to cross country, yeah. the band, the soccer, all the stuff I was in, y'all yeah. was like, okay, here's how you should function. Right, right, right. And, that, and that's good, because, you know, um, you can have a plan. Or, or, or as a parent, you can have a plan for your child, or for your kids, but um, your child have to have that plan. They have to be the one that say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But the reinforcement would all, was always, okay, make sure you have a plan. Right. You know, whatever direction you go in, I mean, because there was that time where I think it was kind of debating on what you wanted to go to school for mm-hmm. or major in. And um, it was like, okay, well, why he want to do that or why he mm-hmm. want to do this? You know what I mean? Like, it it kind of didn't make sense. But like once again, it wasn't our, it wasn't our life. Right. It was your life. I remember that talk. You know, so we were, that, we were still living on Bank Street at the time. Y'all yeah. sat me down in the living room. But yeah. was, that was a heavy conversation. Well, yeah. Because, <laughs> man, you got to understand. I mean, I think I think you was going to school for geologists. We was talking about that at one yeah. time. And then you was talking, then you started talking about majoring in, in, in music, media, and mm-hmm. music. And music it was like, business, it was like yeah. And, and, and the reason why I kind of like pushed back on it a little bit because I can, with my background, for the ones that don't know, background music is my, yeah, it's, one of my it's one of my major backgrounds, you know. So, I seen how things kind of didn't unfold mm-hmm. when I was younger, when I was at, at your age. Um, things, how we came close to making it in the business, but it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And it was a big letdown for me. Right. And it was a, it was kind of like a, a little slight depression mode I kind of went into. I bet, yeah. Because that was my identity, yeah. in a sense, you know. So I was like, okay, that didn't even work. So I don't, I, w- I didn't want to see you crumble in, crumble in that same yeah. area. So when you start talking about music and media, I'm like, okay, ah... Uh, I don't know if you want to do that. I'm thinking geologist. Mm-hmm. You can go to school for that. You can get. I've always been good with the science. Right. You can get a job in the oil field. You can make. You can travel with that. You can do whatever and uh, make pretty good, decent money. You know, what I mean, it, it would be consistent money. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was looking for. That stability. I know how music can be kind of mm-hmm. unstable at times. And I said no. Nope. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. He did what he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but 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 at the end, look how it turned out. Yeah. I mean, it all turned out for the good because look what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. So it all played a big. It all came around full circle. So at the end of the day, we can say you 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 knew exactly what you what yeah. you was doing, you know. So yeah, because you could have tried it and then say if it if it didn't work, right? Like say you say you was failing at whatever you said you wanted to go to school and you went to school for that, but you wasn't doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. At this present time, you was failing at it. I mean, we'd be like, okay, he made a bad decision. That wasn't the thing for. I, I know he should have did what mm-hmm. I told him to do, but you you that's one thing about you, you know you. 
I'm sticking you stick to, to your guns. I'm gonna stick to stick it. Stick to your guns, you know. <laughs> you, you stay straightforward and, and you, you you keep your eyes on the target and you stay consistent at it. You know, um, I got to always give you points on that part because uh, that's one of the things I always did admire because I'm a type of person sometimes I can get laid back on certain things. And I'm like, man, but he, he's so consistent at this. You know what I'm saying? Where you get, where you get that from? You know what I mean? So it's like, get okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I, well, I know, I know. I mean, I, and we are consistent at, at the things that we do. But I think I think for you it's like it's, it's on another level. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's because yeah. I, I take I will say I'm a and I'm gonna get to y'all questions yet, but this this conversation is good. I think I get I pull from the right places from both of y'all because right, I'm a, right, I'm right. a really good blend of y'all. Correct. You know? Yeah. So it, cause and like, we talked about that before. Yeah, because I mm-hmm. like I ain't gonna lie, and now I might be crazy for saying this, but I like pressure. It's like yeah. I, like when I'm backed yeah. against the wall. That's when like, it I like comes. Proving yeah, that's wrong. when. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's what I like. I like that. When somebody tell me, "Oh, you know, you can't do that. That's mm-hmm. not gonna work." It's like it just light the fire. It's like okay, you just done sent me off into another dimension. Right. You know, so I'm, now, I'm ready, now I really want to do. I'm it. ready. I'm ready to go get this now. You know what I mean? So that's the few. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's it. You know, that's Especially the that's the motivation. That's the motive. Yeah, exactly. The passion, man. That's the motivation, man. Yeah, don't don't say I can't do it. Nah, don't say that. Don't say that. Cause when you say that, it it, it transforms into a whole different person. Mm-hmm. You know. Now, Miss yeah. Ava, well, I ain't gonna say Miss. I ain't even gonna do that to you, Ava, because Ava's one of my dogs. Yeah. First of all, shout out to Ava. If she up here, y'all go follow. She just she just recently got her uh certification to be a life coach. So y'all definitely go follow her. She got content and she got services coming out real soon. But um, uh, Ava had said it was well, a question towards you. Oh, and then Mama say thirty years in. Shout out to my mama that's in the building, y'all. Well, she said thirty she years. Said, yeah, y'all too. Thirty years. Oh in. yeah, yeah. The shout out, man. Thirty <laughs> years long, Jeffrey. I got to comment on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not everybody. Look, let me tell you something. And especially this day and, and age. And, and, and we can see that for another segment. Oh no, you can talk because about because we can get into a whole lot of different things, man. When you say thirty years, think about that. You've been with a person for thirty years. Yes. That's unheard yes. of. Especially these days. Yeah, right now it's a microwave generation. Man. You know, it's all about upgrading. Everybody want to, okay, um, I'm with this person, but okay, they're lacking this, they're lacking that, so let me go find somebody that can mm-hmm. do it. Instead of trying to build, mm-hmm. and I'll, trying I'll, to learn I'll with I'll one another, growing with, and, and that's the that's the, uh, that's the, the, the good feeling you get out of being in a relationship for that long, mm-hmm. you know. I, I mean, I can go into a lot of stuff, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But that's... Mama, if you up in yeah. here, that's, that's y'all episode. So whenever y'all yeah. come up here, make sure y'all do that. Yeah, yeah, but, most definitely. Uh, Ava had asked you, if you could tell your 18-year-old self anything, oh, uh, <laughs> what would you say? Ooh, Lord, I would tell myself to call, slow it down. <laughs> slow it down. Wild it. <laughs> you got time. Um, be more responsible. Um, you know, because I wasn't always, man, look. We all got to start somewhere. Yeah, we all yeah, got to start somewhere. Perfect. You know what I mean? It's a lot of things I've done wrong, a lot of mistakes I've made. And I can get into that. I'm not going to get into all that right now. But it's a lot of things that, that that um, I don't know. I would tell myself at, at that age probably, look, man, look, life is tough. Life is not always what you expect it to be. But at the end of the day, it's all about how you handle it and how you deal with it. And I would tell myself to be strong and to make sound decisions, Mm -hmm. you know, judgments on certain things. Um, Friends, you know, make sure you're around the right people. It's important that you have um, a supporting cast or have people that's really down for you. Because we can be in a crowd with a bunch of people, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, they're not really for us. How many people really got you? How many really? And that's Mm -hmm. rare. And that's rare. My dad used to always say, you can find one good friend, count count it a blessing. Because friends don't, they come in not through. friends. I mean, you got associates. You mm-hmm. got some friends that may, that's going to follow you to a certain extent and will do things for you to a certain extent. Um, but that, And that's cool because you know exactly where you're at with that person. Mm-hmm. But it's rare that you find one friend that's going to go the whole nine with you. Right. You know, that's 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 rare. So, um, yeah, I would tell myself, man, to just, you know, just... Um, just to get ready, <laughs> brace yourself, mm-hmm. brace yourself because life is coming, you know. And the way things are now, yeah, man, it's, it's everything is so it's, it's so much, it's man, it's so much faster than what it was from when I was growing up. I mean, things is like quick. I'm trying to keep up. I mean, mm-hmm. even with technology. I mean, just the, yesterday we was on the phone trying to trying to fix the trying to stuff, fix the stuff mm-hmm. trying to get things together. I'm like, bro, like, and, and what seems so easy to you mm-hmm. is like okay. Well, what helped out my yeah. what what helped out my generation is that. I feel like when we came into like adolescence and puberty and stuff like that, 
that was when the technology started taking off. So mm-hmm. around the time y'all was introduced to like uh, uh, ClecoVision and Atari and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like or Sega and Nintendo, yeah, that was our like. Granted, we had Nintendo sixty four, Super Nintendo, all of that right. around our time and Game Boy Advance, but we mm-hmm. had like cell phones, MySpace. You know, like we was the the guinea pig, right? For that. Exactly. So exactly. as time goes on, we was we was gonna be the people that was yeah. gonna be the best of both. Yeah, worlds. y'all just started evolving into all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We wouldn't quite. At that point, yeah, when we was growing up, we had electronics, we had certain things that we had, but it was it wasn't, it wasn't like, like what we have now. It's because when it came out, y'all had got into the working class at that point. Yeah, so exactly. like y'all not even thinking about getting a new phone or no. a new design. Y'all think about making money, making money, working, trying to get it, you know. And everything now is on a phone. Everything it, is digital. Right. Everything is electronic. So um, that's how money is being made now. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't even have to even leave your home. Literally, you know that's what, I'm what I'm doing. Right, <laughs> exactly. You can sit down and in the push of a button. Push this button. Look, hey, this is what it is. I want this. I want that. Nah, I don't want this. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Let me purchase this. Let me download this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, before we yeah. go to our next section, y'all, um, there should be a little meter at the top of there. Y'all just click this. Uh, for all the people that's up in here, just tap. I was supposed to do this earlier. And I forgot to do it because the conversation got so good. Yeah. But y'all tap the screen. So what she said, y'all had beepers and payphones. Mama clown. What she said? She said y'all had beepers and payphones. Beepers and payphones. That's but, what we had. Uh, y'all make sure y'all tap in the screen and fill up the meter because that throws us into the algorithm and that throws the uh, podcast even further. And for all y'all that, that haven't subscribed to the YouTube yet, this is episode 21, I believe. Okay. So make sure that y'all go back and catch up, subscribe, all that type of stuff because he's going to be back. My mom's going to have her own episode and they're going to be back wait, as a I can't wait, man. I can't wait. It's going to be late. I, I love this. I love this. But keep keep, get, keep the questions coming. But to get into the, the next section, yeah. Um, we this now this is the part I've been waiting to talk about. So you talked about um we're gonna dive into your music background. Okay. So let's talk about okay. like your musical background from literally from back then. Okay. All the stuff you did up until yeah, now, yeah. and then we'll go into like your new okay. music. Yeah, like okay, that. okay. This is he's still an active artist, a very good one. Oh, that. very much so. Um I can see let's just start from way back when I was a kid. Let's just start off with that. When I was a kid, my dad he had an old stereo for the ones that don't know who might, might be watching this mm-hmm. it's with the the record player Bond, we call the vinyl the way yeah. you can put the vinyl on there and you take the, the needle and put it down and, mm-hmm. and it'll play uh, he oh, had, that brown one? yeah that brown mm-hmm. one yeah it's like a flow model like yeah. type deal that was the thing back in the days and uh, which probably was back in the I don't know what the seven, maybe 77 78 somewhere around there um, I started off, he told me, I don't remember this, but he said I used to um, reach inside of the uh, the stereo mm-hmm. to grab some albums from out of there, the records, the vinyls, and I would um, take the record and I would try to put it on my finger and I would try to spin it mm-hmm. like that. And and I know back then he would play all of the um, old Sam Cooke's uh, music. Um, he would also play the Andre Crouch, a lot of spiritual things, of course. Mm-hmm. And once again, remember, my, I come from out of a household that was very... Uh, spiritual mm-hmm. in a sense. So um, he had those records. I would I would sit down by the speaker. I can remember that sitting by the speaker and listening to some of the songs. You know that they would play. My mom would be cleaning up the house, and um, when, while she's cleaning, I'm, she's playing the, the record player. So I'm sitting. So I'm. That's a so I'm, mo- I'm seeing like a movie. That's right. A so I'm. So I'm. So I'm hearing music. So music is is around me, and um, also I would always hear uh, that I had an uncle. Uh, rest in peace, my uncle Alvin. That uh, I was just talking about him with Ava earlier, right before you got here. Right, right. He was the singer. He was the actual singer of uh of the family on my mom's side, and I never had really heard him sing before. Then um, as time when he was staying in New York, and when he came down to visit, he actually sung, and I was like, wow, okay. I thought I could have sang. Yeah, he got it. So um, that was some of my upbringings when it came down to that. Um, also moving on. Like I said, I always did. I was always around music in church. Um, but I was in church, but I wasn't singing in the choir at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't singing on the praise team or nothing like that. I was seeking out R&B, mm-hmm. R&B music, you know. Oh, yeah, and shout out to my dad because my dad once played in the band. He played in the band, and he had mm-hmm. a bass. That's it right there? Yeah, he had a bass, that bass right there. He had a bass, and I would play around with that bass in the house when I was little. I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I would just play around with it like a toy in mm-hmm. a sense. And um, so, so that side, you know, musical side from my dad too. Shout out to him for passing down the genes of. Uh, matter of fact, from from me to you, yeah. Because you you see how that worked, it, exactly. Exactly, you see how that worked. If it wouldn't have been for him with the bass, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Would you would be still? I, I don't have know. No idea because that know? was the first. That was one of the first instruments I ever got. Right. Because the only other instrument I, I can remember, other than drums, that I was like mm-hmm. really playing on, playing on, was like when you had that little Casio. 
piano yeah, at the house. Yeah. That's the only other thing I really, yeah, I know. really yeah. on. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Just to show you how the, you know, like you say, pathology, how how it flows, it how, 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 how you get to that point, how it got to you, from my dad to me to you. But anyway, um, I once again I um, um, I was in this group, I was in this group called Intimate, right? <laughs> and we had this group. Um, shout out to my boy Shannon and Frank and Morris and all this. Sean. Uh, shout out to y'all, man. Wait, so that was before we continue. That so yeah. the name of the the name of the uh, the album was Love Thing, or was the name of the album was Love Thing? But the group was but called the group Intimate. was called I've been Intimate. thinking about it the other yeah, way. Yeah, it was okay. called Intimate, and 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 we and, and you gotta realize we grew up in a time when they had um, when you say we talk about R and B, right? Of course, we can go way back. But the things that were popping at that time. Wait, Mama just said was, uh, I wasn't the man too. So don't so so Brian don't uh, take all the credit. No, that was no, that was the that was the dancer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could talk about that, but uh, but yeah, man. Uh, we had the group going on, but you gotta realize at that time we had um. I mean, you got um Jodeci, you got Jagged Edge, yeah, you got Boys to hitter. Men. Um, what else we had going on at the time? Drew Hill. Uh, all Drew of that. Hill H Town, all these guys like that at the time, um, those groups, uh, High Five, that's going a little further back. Mm-hmm. High Five, we had a group called Riff, that's going way back on Lean On Me, the show mm-hmm. Lean On Me, those guys that sung the Fair East Side song. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, them, they were, they were, uh, were some people that we kind of um, emulated or whatever or looked up to. So we we imitated that, you know what I'm saying? So I was in the group. And, and with that uh, being said, uh, we formed the group. We did very well at that. Um, I don't know if you want to get into the part of yeah, all of it. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, they don't. They know me, but they yeah, yeah. Know, I want them. To yeah, know well, you. okay. We had this group called Intimate, right? Let me bring y'all into it. We had this group called Intimate. We was trying to get signed with LaFace Records, and Keith Sweat had a record, uh, a, a studio at the time, mm-hmm. a record label. So we was trying to do that. We had music that was out. Um, we were singing in different little clubs here and there. We, of course, we would sing around school. Um, do things like that. Um, so we, was, so you can say we was like school famous in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, for Black History Program, we would sing for that. Um, Don't tell it to Steven. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, man. But we'll do that. And uh, music was just a part of our life. That's what we was doing. And but the deal didn't fall through. Um, we had certain things that didn't fall into play that should have fell into play. Mm-hmm. But we was into so many different things at the time to where everybody wouldn't focus. Right. Totally on the music, mm-hmm. so I believe I believe everything happened for a reason because if we, right. we would have signed the contract, if we would have signed the deal, no telling where our lives would be at right mm-hmm. now because we was not stable at all. You know Yo, when it came, and, and, I mean, and you can sit back and watch some of the groups that's on TV now when they say what happened to this group, mm-hmm. and you see how they how they signed they signed uh, bad contracts. Some people got on drugs, mm-hmm. um, just life all jacked up. You know, um, so it's kind of a blessing. That we didn't make it at that time, but it was a big letdown to me because that was one of the things that I really, really wanted to do. Because see, for me, music is my thing. I can travel twenty four seven and do music, mm-hmm. and I don't have to even really be in the forefront. I don't mind. But I do background. Mm-hmm. I can be in the studio and produce, and I can um, uh, work with different artists or whatever like that. I'm fine with that, you know. Um, as long as it's a as long as it's something dealing with music, that's just. That's my place. Mm-hmm. That's my sanctuary. You know what I'm saying? So that's my identity in a sense. But um, but yeah, we did that. It didn't go well. And then as time went on, uh, I still kept singing. I got with some other groups. I got with my cousin, with um, Richard and Chris Wright, um, um, Quincy. Uh, we had a group that was, was together. We were singing music. At that time, we was doing gospel music. Mm-hmm. We was doing that thing. Um, but before that, I, I, I got to give a shout out to Shannon because Shannon was... Uh, me and Shannon went all over singing. Well, Shannon Deal. Yeah, me and Shannon grew up together. Matter of fact, with the group Intimate, mm-hmm. we were together in that group. And then when we um, the, the group split up and time went on, then we started uh, dibbling down and started dip, dipping into gospel music. Mm-hmm. So we did that. And um, and me and him traveled all over. We we had a lot of places doing uh, doing music, man. We did a lot of music together. Saw a lot of things, experienced a lot of things. It was a good journey. That we had when we did that. It so, what was the transition before we go into the other stuff? What transition? Because I'm pretty sure they're asking the same question. Yeah. What made you go from R and B to gospel? Okay. Well, once again, going back, I always grew up in church, mm-hmm. right? I just never had sung in the, the choir. Uh, the none, choir. Of none of that. You know what I'm saying? But what happened was, I'm gonna tell you what happened. How it transitioned. What happened was for the for our wedding, for our for mm-hmm. our wedding, me and your mom wedding. 
I sung a song for the wedding, mm -hmm. right? And the, the lady, the praise team, she heard the song, and she, well, she heard me sing at the wedding. She was like, wow. She was like, I didn't know you actually could have sang like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. And um, and and she said, you need to try to think about trying to join the pray or the choir. So I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Cause you know, R&B music and choir is Hope gospel. It's like, yeah, it's like two different things. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, should I do this or should I not do this? But I was like, okay, I felt obligated. Being that it was presented to me, mm -hmm. and I said, well, maybe that might be God, might be trying to tell me something, mm -hmm. you know. So, which I, and I think He really was, you know, at that time, because okay, you didn't try it R and B, now let's try this, mm -hmm. you know. So I did that and um, got on a praise on, on a choir, in the choir, and I did that for some years. That was believers. Shout huh? out to believers, yeah. BFWC. Uh, we did. I did that for some years over there. I'm still there now, you know. what I'm saying, but um, yeah, that's how I transitioned from from R and B to um, doing gospel music. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because some people, you know, they just jump into it, you know. But I have a background of, like I said, all going back to my dad with the record players, playing mm -hmm. the Andre Crouch songs and stuff like I that. I grew up, it was always around me. It was always in me, you know. So it was just a matter of time, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. that eventually, um, which a lot of artists, they do that. A lot of R&B artists, if you, if, you, if you get to talking to them, they'll tell you, oh, my background was church. Mm -hmm. My grandmother would bring me to church right. every Sunday. We had church Sunday, Wednesday, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, Monday or whatever. You know, we was it always at church. A, a particular type of town. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's what it does, man. And, 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 and yeah, it definitely gives you a sense of singing from the soul. Right. That play, it gives you depth. People can feel you, you know what I'm saying, whenever you come from you got to go through your embarrassments, too, because just because you're singing in church don't mean it's going to always be good. There's no. plenty of times you hear that, take your time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody doing bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that, but that's how I transitioned and went into all that, which brings us in, into now, mm -hmm. into what I'm doing now. I mean, tell them about your music and what they can find. Yeah, my music, man. Let me tell you something, everybody that's out there, <laughs> you, you're listening, you're tuning in right now. To Brian Warwick Senior, that's me, you know, and 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 uh, I have a song out right now, a new release. Um, the song is called um, uh, "It's By Faith." It's called by "It's By Faith." I have a bunch of other songs that came that, that I put out in the past that you can also find on YouTube. All platforms. Uh, all platform, uh, digital platforms. Uh, Brian Warwick Senior, go on that. You can click on that YouTube, um, Spotify, uh, SoundCloud. All these different uh, areas you can go on, but the but the song but the song is by faith. It's a song that I just released, um, like yesterday. Just released. Did it, it. yesterday? Or I dropped it. I th or before that. I think well, I, I dropped it. Link yesterday, but it right. aired like a few days. Ago. Right, right, right. So that song there is definitely a song that's needed for the time, and I can get in and real. I can get into that man. You know, I don't want to without sounding. I don't want to sound so. You know, people try to sound so churchy, try to sound like so yeah, spiritual. Forgive, forgive people saying. Say no, what no, say. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. But the song is called "Is by Faith," and the reason, uh, one of the reasons, I think, um, the song is so imperative for this time right now because we are living in a time where everything is just so chaotic. Very. I mean, we can admit that. Very. That we're living in a time where if you turn the news, you're seeing smallpox. You're seeing uh. Uh, what they had, um, COVID was popping at one time. The mm -hmm. every name, the Delta, the Omicron. I mean, you got all these different things that's, that's popping out, and that type of thing sets a tone. It does in the atmosphere. It it, it, it sets a, a tone, a sense of panic and survival. So everybody's looking for that way out. They're looking mm -hmm. for that peace. They're looking to say, okay, man, how can I get my mind in the right place? Because I can right. I can remember that time when times when that COVID thing came out. Right. I was like, man. It's gonna pass. It's gonna pass. And then when I started seeing people dying by right. the by the thousands, I'm like, man, hold up, I might be next. Mm -hmm. So just to keep my mind, you know, stable, I'm like, okay, I had to go to a deeper place, and I had to, to believe God. This. Right. I had to go into a deeper place, which it, it was. And I say, okay, I got to believe. I got to trust. I got to get my mind. And let me tell you something. Whenever you do that. Whenever you believe and you trust God, because people might say, "Well, how you know even know there's a God? How you even know you talking about God, God, God?" You know, because we could we got we can get into a lot of different discussions when it come down to that. I always say I'm a living witness from it. I know there is a God because of me. Mm -hmm. I'm a living witness. There's some things that I've been through that I know that right. I couldn't change with willpower. Mm -hmm. I couldn't change it within myself, even if I wanted to. You know what I mean? So I needed you know, God to come in and it was by faith because it was some time to where it didn't seem like I was going to come out of certain situations right. that I was going through. I was going through some things in my body. Actually, that's how this song was actually birthed, you know, through me going through something. And I was like, God, hold up. I'm not understanding this. You know, I'm going through these different things. I'm going to doctors. The doctors don't know what it is, different medications. 
I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of going. The doctors just sticking me in, you know, taking blood. I'm like, okay, after a while, you get frustrated with these things. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, I can hear that voice saying, you don't have to see it. You don't have to feel it. You just got to believe it. And you got to just stand on my word. And and when I heard it, I heard that I was like, okay, that got to go in a song. Mm -hmm. That that has to definitely have to be in a song. And that's, and that's part of the first verse uh, when the song comes on. Um, and that's the thing. We don't have to see it. We don't have to feel it. But we have to know that there is a God that can bring us out. I tell people all the time, um, how do I know there is a God? Okay, it's like this. You may not physically see God but you can see the effects of what he's doing. That part. You see what I'm saying? You can see the effects. It's just because you can't see wind don't mean it don't exist. Mm -hmm. You still can feel the effects of wind. Right. You let a hurricane come, it's knocking trees down, it's tearing roofs off, people's houses, all that and above. Mm -hmm. So nobody can convince you that that's not wind. You know for a fact that's wind. Right. Right. So, so, so I don't want to get too deep into it, but at the end of the day, You're making sense. Yeah, that, but it's by faith. You have to trust. And I believe that this is a song that don't need to be put on a shelf. I believe right. that this is a song that don't need to take a back seat. I think that this is a song that needs to be in the forefront to where people can actually understand that there is hope, you know, even in the time that we're living in. There's hope. There's hope, right. man. Because people, let me tell you, people commit suicide. Yes. They're trying to cope with situations with drugs. Um, doctors giving them all kind of medication, and I don't knock doctors. I don't though. knock doctors, you know what I'm saying, by the end of the day, because they're doing what they know to do. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? By the end of the day, what you do when that medication don't work? Right. You come to Coach Brian. That's yeah, do. there you go. Go to Coach <laughs> Brian. Go to Coach Brian. Get your health, get your mind together, get your life right. You know, that's what it... Even even in the midst of everything, and yeah, I touch all, but yeah, even in the midst ahead. of everything that you're saying, is like one, one of the biggest things that I'm grabbing from it mm -hmm. is like even in the midst of that, is like you're still presented with options. Right. You know, you're still presented with some form of a way out and you're still presented yeah. with like alternatives. Because, right. I mean, you saying what you was going through with your body and the doctor and stuff like that, but you was also consulting with me. Mm -hmm. You know, you was also finding ways to not give, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. So I was, like, yeah, I was going two ways with it. I was believing God. I was trusting. And putting the, the actions behind it. I was putting it. actions behind it. I was actually seeking out, okay, let me get with my son. Let me try to see, you know, because sometimes God could be saying, okay, you keep praying and praying and praying and it seems like things not working. Well, maybe it's something I might need you to do. Physically, mm -hmm. I somehow give you the power to do, and that's to seek out information. That's to get with somebody that may know exactly, like such as you. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's let's get let's get on this herbal thing. Let's see exactly. Maybe I need to um, dismiss certain foods that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. You know, stop some bad habits that I'm that that, that I may have. Right. Um. You know that type of thing. You know, and um and add some discipline in that with faith, mm -hmm. with trusting, because God used because God going. God used people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you think about the people way back in the days, our ancestors, you know, what did they use? They used herbs. Exactly. That's exactly what they used to heal themselves. You know what I mean? So so God can use people. He can use herbs. It's not, it's not so to speak, well, I'm praying and I'm asking God to do something for me. It seems like he's not doing it. Well, maybe it may just, God might be telling you, you need to try something. You need to not say try something else, mm -hmm. but seek out another way of trying to do something in a sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can do it yourself. Right. Maybe you can seek out somebody to help you. Because God is going God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. That too. You know what I'm saying? Why Why should he do it? What father you know going to do something for you that you can do for yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, he wants you to learn. He wants you to do it on your own. Right. You know, he, 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 um, you're not a robot. You know the robot. You're, I mean, you you're not. Will. You got free will. You're not programmed. You know what I'm saying? You're not a programmed person. You're a type of person that can think that can reason and can seek out certain things. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah, man. But that, but anyway, you know, that's the song is by faith, man. And, and and I'm on this campaign. Like I said, I'm really push trying to push this song and put this everywhere I can put it. And like I said, you can find it on all all digital uh, medias. You know, you can find it on that. Go download the song. Go download the song. Go download mm -hmm. download. Streaming the song, all of give, give him his his yeah, streams. Please, please. Put a lot of time into that. Song. Yeah, please. We yes, we did. Yes, we did. A lot of pain, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> and like I said before, I had to go through something for that song. I had to birth that song. It's not like somebody just wrote the song for me and said he'll sing. No, nah, no. Nah, I had to really go through some things to to get that out, man. And, and that's why it's so near and dear to me. And I, and and I know for a fact that it's going to help other people. Yeah, I have no doubt about it. I have no doubt about it. Just try. It. It's like it, it just listen to it, just try it, you know, and uh, I guarantee it's gonna, it's, it's, it can, it will bring you out of whatever you're going through, mm -hmm. you know, because um, it's nothing like when you put your hands on something that you have already, you've been through. Right. It's authentic. It's real. You know, it's a song that comes from a place of realness. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like that translates very well, especially in the bridge. The right. Bridge is my, it's my favorite part of the song. Yeah, yeah, I'll but stand. It, it's yeah. like. 
people fail to realize it's a lot deeper than just oh I'm putting something out. It's mm-hmm. like well at least for the people that make real you know what I'm saying like real music. Yeah, yeah. It's like you actually these songs don't just oh we just sit down coming up with stories. It's like no we actually going through this. Yeah, we going through you know, this. You know we we're going oh, yeah. through a process of how yeah. like the reason why the song is so felt and authentic is because nothing about it is a story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know you might have a little motivational words and lyrics you put into add to the story. Right, right, right. But right. it's like but nothing about it is fake. Yeah. Like, I didn't been through this. Here's how I got through no, it. No, man. That's why know, I can talk on this. Forward. That's why I can talk on this. You know, like, that's why I can say there's not a song that needs to be swept under the rug. This is not a song. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of artists out there that's doing some great and awesome things. And go support them. Please go support those people. You know, but at this moment in this time, you know, this is the voice that's speaking. This mm-hmm. is the voice that you're listening to right yeah. now. So this voice is saying that if you're going through something, we all do go through something. If you're not going through something, just give it time. You will. Go mm-hmm. through something. You know, this song here is a song that can get you through uh, whatever dilemma or situation you may be going mm-hmm. through. You know, um, it's not the only way. You know what I'm saying? This song, you know but what I mean? One of the best that, ways. That, but, but this is one of the best ways. I don't, I, don't, I don't proclaim to be the best, you know, singer out there that can hit all these high notes and go in the rafters and do all this stuff. But I do sing from a place of passion and from a place of experience. And I think that's, that, that's what makes the difference. When it when it comes down to the song, I sing from that place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's, it's not something that's sh- it's not shallow. It's not something that's superficial. You know what I'm saying? But it's um it's definitely something that I have experienced. And if you really listen to it and really pay attention to what's being said, like they say, listen to the voice that's within the voice. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it definitely will uh, definitely do something um, in your life. That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. It's about just just trusting God and believing, you know. And I want to give a big shout out to because I'm looking. If y'all see me, I don't normally use the iPad. I need to give me another iPad. This thing is busted. Mm-hmm. But um, for all the people I'm seeing up in here too that's supporting, y'all can go find find him on all platforms again at Brian Warwick Senior. Y'all have it in the comment section, Brian Warwick Senior. And y'all, we like to kind of piggyback what he said as we close things up a little bit. Mm-hmm. We the reason why I'm even doing. Let's talk about this podcast for a second because right. like. I know I come on here and I talk about herbs and I talk about holistic remedies and how to heal and help people, but there's so many other facets of life. Yeah. You know, so yeah. one of my biggest things is I'm going to show y'all my way of doing things and how I view certain things. But what about the people that impacted my life? What about the other yeah. people that I know? Cause like yeah. Ava, if you still up in here, I want another episode with Ava, but with her here, Yeah. Okay. you know, because Ava did, it was episode, I think like 10, somewhere around there. And she was talking about like, I'm talking about some of the, and then she now she's a certified life coach, so now I want her to like come from a, a whole nother standpoint, you know. And it's like I I really want people to see that if you honestly just have like you said before a good supporting cast, correct, or are casting your life properly, correct, correct. You're doing things within yourself to help and better yourself, and you're trusting in the most natural and spiritual ways possible. Because everything we talked about today dealt with identity, correct. it dealt with nurturing yeah. your soul, nurturing right. your spirit, right. who you around, you know, right. what you putting inside yourself, right. And if we really recultivate that mindset. Mm-hmm. We can push a lot further than where we are right now, yeah, yeah. but it's all up to the people. Like you said, the yeah. society thing is yeah. all up to the people. We can yeah. give you all these options. We can give you all this, that, and the third, but mm-hmm. if you're not actually trying to do it right. or if you're not actually in a position or trying to put yourself in a position yeah. to move forward, then what are we actually doing yeah. well, with our lives? Yeah. And I, I think you can say it, you, the word you can use is awareness, being aware, just being aware of who you are, where you're at, what's going on, who you are, where you're at, what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, and when and when you can sit down and you can analyze that, and when you can um, understand exactly what's going on, I think you can make better decisions on life. Um, and like you just said, just the podcast, just trying to get different perspectives, you know, from different from different sides, you know, um, different sides, different angles, um, to see things differently. Because there's always two sides to a coin, right? You know, there's always two sides to where you can see things differently. Um, you can have a pre- people looking, well, two people looking at one thing, and they're gonna, two different they're gonna have two different stories. I mean, had, they had a thing that we used to do back in the school, when you would, um, maybe the teacher would be like, well, hey, I want you to tell so and so this, a certain statement, and it could be something like, the dog crossed the street. Now that got have to go through, filter through all these different, through about 25 to 30 people in that classroom. And by the time it gets to the 30th person. Does it even say the same thing? All right. It may be, mm-hmm. instead of the dog, it may be the cat crossed the street, ran across the street. Mm-hmm. It can be a bunch of things, you know what I mean? Perception. So perception. How people hear things. Yeah. So be aware. So just, you know, perception and be aware of what's going on, man. That's what it's about. Being aware. Because I think things are moving so fast. Yes. To where you have to just be aware 
of what's going on around you. Just stop and pause. Hit the pause button for a little while and say, okay, what's going on? How do I reset? What do I need to do to to, to, to regain focus and get my uh, my feet back on the ground mm-hmm. and, and start going back in this right direction and be true to yourself? Mm-hmm. Be true to yourself. You know, I always say, um, be who you are. I would always tell you all that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? No matter what's going on around you, be who you are. Because you'll get lost in a stack. Mm-hmm. You'll get lost in all these not. different personalities and all these, you know, you can't. And then you find yourself somewhere to where, you know, that's why you see so many kids that's so messed up these days. You know, because of not no individuality. Not, no individuality. They don't have, they don't know who they are. You can ask somebody today, you'll be like, well, who are you? Well, okay, well, I'm, I'm John Doe. Yeah, that's your name. But who are you? But who are as you? A, right. As a person. You know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of people really can't sometimes even answer that question. Well, I come from my, my dad. My mom is this. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Not your mom, not your dad. Mm-hmm. Who are you mm-hmm. as an individual? You know, I think when you can sit down and be honest with yourself, you know, and say, okay, this is who I am. This is what this is what I'm about. And I think when you can embrace that. Oh, that, that part. Right. I think, that when, part. I think when you can embrace that, I think you can be, because for a long time I had to try to be honest with you. There was a point in time in my life. You know, when I had to embrace, okay, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, because you hang around people mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, well, uh, you figure to fit in, I got to be like that. To fit in, I got to. And I always felt kind of uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I feel kind of uncomfortable. That's why you don't fit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hold on, sit down. Who are you? Mm-hmm. Find out who you are. And once you kind of sit down and reflect back on those Circles things, it's like, okay, okay, this is who I am. And you feel so much comfortable. You feel feel so much relaxed, so much at ease. The pressure, you know, the weight come off, mm-hmm. you know. And whoever don't accept it, they just That's don't. Ex- they just don't accept it. It's not for them to accept anyway. Right. It's you your, know what exactly. I mean? It's your life. Right. It's your life. It's who you are. Because at the end of the day, when things happen, it's you. It's not so and so. You know what I mean? It's just you and God. It's just you. Your family. It's just, it's just you. In in a sense, you know. When you're going through certain things, it's just you. Mm-hmm. You know, they ain't gonna feel what you're feeling later. Right, exactly, yourself. exactly. So you have to be real with yourself and true to yourself. Don't abuse yourself. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Don't abuse yourself because people can abuse themselves by trying to be like this and being like that, trying to put on different things that don't fit. Right. Personalities or getting around certain crowds mm-hmm. that don't even that don't fit. You know, and in the process of it, you become damaged. Right, I've been living there. up to something that you. Yeah, have. I've been there, man. You get damaged, you know what I'm saying? Those type of things, and then you sit back and be like, wow. I can't really believe I put myself through all this, mm-hmm. you know, trying to be something that I'm not, mm-hmm. you know. And um, let me tell you, when you can be true to yourself and you can embrace that, man, you save yourself a lot of heartache and pain. A lot of time, too. That's for sure. A lot of time. Because time is what we don't get back. We definitely don't get time back. Yo, I'm ending the podcast on that note. Ain't nothing else we could talk about that's going to top that. <laughs> that was, that's, that's a good close. Yeah, yeah. Try to, try to give that knowledge, man. Trying to help people. Trying to inform, trying to encourage, trying to inspire, trying to motivate, trying to just let people know, man. Look, it, 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 look, you can do it. And I can go on and on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know me. You can do it. I'm that motivator. I'm that one that's gonna tell you, man. That's look, why you need your own podcast. That's why I like what you, you can do it. Fa- y'all go follow him on Facebook too, because he yeah, be doing. He still like yeah. he still be going live and posting videos and everything. So y'all yeah. go follow him. Same thing in the music. Brian Warwick Senior. Yep. Y'all go follow him. Y'all go see. He don't, he don't have a YouTube yet. We're going to work on that eventually. Yeah, we're going to work on but that. But he yeah, has a Facebook. You yeah. know, he has music everywhere. Y'all go check him out and y'all go get y'all go get a good piece of that because you'll be surprised with adding that one little supportive detail to your life a change. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's all the time, y'all. We about to wrap it up. I hope y'all had a good one. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. This was this was cool. I can't wait for my one. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready to see what that's going to yeah, be like. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Love y'all, man. I always say, this is what I always say. I got to leave with this. I'm going to let him close it. One of my sayings is always this. My saying is keep loving, keep loving, keep loving. Because love changes things. Love is contagious. Love is a motivator. And love is a force to be reckoned with. Love is just love. Love y'all. That's what I always say. That's what it's all about.